In the heart of the western prairies, just outside the city of Winnipeg, on the banks of the Assiniboine River, rests historic Camp Manitou. Like most summer camps, Manitou has the typical activities, zip lining, wall climbing, archery, and a swimming hole. Summer camp is different this year. For the first time in its 80-year history, Camp Manitou is playing host to a community of people who are about to experience their very first summer camp. Our voices. Our stories. Our community. My name is Bonnie Heath and I'm the Executive Director of Equality Communication Center of Excellence, or ECHO, many people know it as. I also oversee the Resource Center for Manitobans who are deaf blind and we are currently at the Forks. We are really excited to be hosting the first Canadian deaf blind camp at Camp Manitou in Winnipeg and uh, we have about 37 campers coming who will be zip lining, participating in peer support workshops, um, doing everything that one would imagine a camp would involve and uh, especially making new friends. Winnipeg also has a capacity. We've been working with deafblind people for 22 years, so it was logical to have it here. Camp Manitou's been an amazing partner. We actually have volunteers coming at their own expense from other provinces, which is really impressive. And we need, you know, uh, quite a serious number of volunteers and, and interveners or interpreters. And so it's going to be uh, a busy but exciting week. Interveners are a specialized field providing professional services to facilitate the interaction of a deaf-blind person with other people in their environment. They act as the deaf-blind person's eyes and ears. The Dream Big Deaf-Blind Camp required almost 70 interveners and support service providers, many of whom volunteered. My name is Angela Mayne Obergon and I'm the coordinator at the Resource Centre for Manitobans who are deaf-blind. We are in Camp Manitou, uh, currently in the Arts and Crafts cabin. This, this camp took months and months of planning and involved a lot of work. It was stressful. Uh, the team that I got to work with, MJ, Trevor, Gail, Isla, Bonnie, it, they were just amazing. My name is Trevor Barrett. This is my good friend and really my boss, Angela. Mayan Obergon, the coordinator at the Resource Center for Manitobans who are deafblind. And we are here today at Camp Manitou, just outside Winnipeg, where in two days, the first ever National Blind Deaf Camp is going to be happening right here. Okay, so now what we're doing is, Angela and myself, we're just putting up these ropes as guidelines and just safety so the people can actually feel their way to and from the cabins all the way to the washroom facilities. Just a safety net kind of thing. So after this, when we get the ropes up, we're gonna put flags on for extra visibility for our clients who uh, have, uh, can pick it up with whatever visual acuity they possess. Just rope and tape. And it's amazing just what you can do to help people be safe with just those two items. The main thing is that the people can get to and from their cabin safely and uh, that they come here, they have a good time, we're going to learn from each other, we're going to share with each other. This is the seed getting planted guys and wait till you see the size of this sucker is going to grow. We have campers coming from the east coast to the west coast right across Canada flying into Winnipeg plus we have our local community here so we have about 30 people at camp. Toronto is Canada's largest city and home for Elio, a deaf-blind college instructor who's planning on attending the first ever deaf-blind summer camp. My name is Elio Regillo. Laura Martiri is my intervener today, sitting to my left. And we're here sitting at my house in my family room and we're here in Toronto. So the deaf-blind camp in Winnipeg is the first one uh, happening in Canada. I actually saw the posting for it on Facebook through a friend who posted it. And when I saw it, I was interested, so I clicked on the link and that's how I found out. So firstly, the reason that I wanna to go to camp is I'm a father of three kids, married. I have a few jobs myself, so I'm very, very busy typically. 
So I want to go away, mm -hmm. you know, take a nice break from Ontario, have a good experience, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. seeing Winnipeg for the week. You know, there'll be people, deafblind people from all across Canada, from different provinces going. So it's important for me to meet different people, chat, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. The greater Vancouver area is home to 2.5 million people. It's also home to DB residents Eddie and Tracy. We caught up with them at Eddie's residence. And my name is Eddie Morton. And this is my name sign. And I'll let you know that I, the, I got my name sign from the deaf school when I was younger. So maybe because I'm so brilliant, it's the E on the top of the head, like uh, the sign for smart. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to see some of my old uh, friends. Really excited. It'd be nice to see them again. It's been a long time. So it'd be nice to meet some new, new people there as well and learn about their skills and how they go about their lives every day and different things we can share in order to support each other being deafblind. Um, it, it'll be great. It'll be wonderful for all of us to get together at camp and to socialize and visit and share their experiences. And it'd be nice to see more and more deafblind people in Canada be there. While Eddie packs and gets his gear ready, Tracy drops in for a visit to make plans for their journey to Winnipeg. For Tracy, attending the summer camp has a special significance, a chance to socialize, share ideas, and catch up with old friends. Well, hi there, my name is Tracy, and uh, my last name is Metzger, and this is my name sign. And it's like the sign for art, because I love art, and I've always loved art. Um, we're here in Vancouver, British Columbia. Yeah. I've never been in Winnipeg oh, myself, uh, so I think it's awesome. It'll be a great experience for me, my first time being there. I'm excited. I want to see some new faces. I want to meet you all. Uh, maybe if you're feeling nervous or excited, I'm sure you're all feeling the same. I just, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. And for me, I just really, really want to network with people. I want to meet as many people as possible. I'm hoping to make some new friendships. I mean, you never know what to expect. On the opposite coast of the country in Fredericton, New Brunswick, MJ, who is part of the camp planning committee, has been attending to some last minute details. MJ has Usher's syndrome. Born deaf, he is slowly losing his eyesight. My name is Michael Stewart. I reside in Fredericton, New Brunswick. I'm looking forward to the camaraderie uh, with the staff, the volunteers, the Canadian deaf blind campers, the committee. I mean, we've been working on this as a committee for, what, over a year now, just having meetings and stuff and fundraising. And I hope with our creativity and our ideas that everyone's going to come and enjoy themselves and have a lot of fun. It's a place to express yourself, to develop together, to have rich experiences and just being able to grow together. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Sunday at the Winnipeg International Airport, or we will have two groups that will be transported to the camp by bus. And our official opening, however, is Monday morning. I want them to have so much fun. I want them not to worry for a week. Just come and relax and meet new friends. Don't feel isolated. Just be part of the, uh, you know, the Deaf Blind Camp family. It's going to be awesome. As the campers arrive, the excitement builds. Elio unpacks to get ready for the official opening ceremonies. I want to say, of course, welcome. A big welcome. One of the things that we want to do in our opening remarks is to make sure that people understand our relationship to Camp Manitou. This camp has been in Winnipeg for many, many decades. A lot of people from Manitoba have attended this camp. 
and working with the Camp Manitou staff has been awesome. After Bonnie welcomes everyone, Elder Clarence Napanak and his wife Barb bless the camp with an indigenous prayer. The deaf, blind campers walk along the trails that follow the path of the Assiniboine River. For many like Elio, it's an opportunity to get up close to the natural world and away from the trappings of a big city. The group stops at a totem pole and campfire circle, a reminder that the camp is located on Treaty 1 lands, part of Canada's indigenous heritage. The banks of the Assiniboine River define the boundaries of the camp that the hikers wander through. They experience the old growth of the deciduous forest, smelling, touching, and feeling the natural beauty that surrounds them. Which will loop us back to fire building that way, mm -hmm. but we moved the fish spot. Hi, my name is Tracy, and I'm from, I'm from Vancouver, BC. And I'm here now in a really awesome place at Deaf Blind Camp, the Canadian Deaf Blind Camp. And it's been a really wonderful experience so far this week. I've really, really enjoyed myself. It's been a great time. I've been involved in lots of different activities. There's been arts and crafts, um, different painting and things like that. We also did some bannock making. We had a bannock making class. Campers roast bannock on a stick over an open fire. The roasted bread is a staple food in the indigenous culture. The aromatic scent drifts across the camp as good friends, new and old, share a treat, some memories, and a link to the past as they enjoy a staple food of voyageurs and first settlers in Western Canada. And we had um, just recently some games. I was involved in a team building activity and uh, that was a very new experience for me, but I'm gonna remember that for next time actually and, and maybe try to use that when I'm back in BC. One of the most popular activities was the team building game. Opponents sit on opposite sides of each other and communicate by squeezing hands. The first one to grab the red ball off the chair wins the game. It's a game that gives everyone the opportunity to work together in a team environment and combines a little competition with a little fun. Encouraging all participants to work as a team, communicate effectively, and ultimately claim victory. One of the toughest challenges at the Dream Big Camp is the climbing wall. Campers scramble up the wall to touch the top and come back down again. However, deaf, blind campers struggle to find footing as they feel their way to the top of the structure. Missing their footing on the wall pegs leaves the campers swinging in the air. The sure-footed Elio makes it look easy as he breezes to the top of the three-story structure, victorious. Hi, my name is Eddie Morton and I'm here at the Canadian Deaf Blind Camp in Winnipeg. I was doing some rock climbing but both times I found it pretty hard. I did finish, uh, I did do some rock climbing before when I was younger and uh, you know I made it to the top and I know that it's possible um, but you know this is quite a few years later and yeah it just was not as easy as it used to be. But it's good for me to try because you know I always try my best and try to meet a challenge and that's what I did today. I think that the, this camp has really um, met my expectations. I'm meeting a lot of deafblind people, uh, seeing what their challenges in life are and, and how, the, how they meet those challenges. So I'm really enjoying it so far. <laughs> Most campers here are always joking with each other. We're very happy, we're all very friendly and enjoying each other's company. Um, we discuss our stories, our challenges, our life experiences, and I'm finding it very fulfilling. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. My name is Trevor Barrett and we're here at the first National Deaf Blind Camp at Camp Manitou. I participated in uh, 
the, the, the rock climbing wall, which I did amazing at. I did mat time, um, some games here, and um, yeah, just sit, and also sitting around, just making new friends. When I was on the zip line, I was trying to just do, uh, make a fancy move to show people that we can do anything we want. And I, instead of looking like Superman, I looked like Krusty the Clown falling down the stairs. Before you Ready try, next. I'm going upside you. down, boys. Yeah. Just say, just say when to go. All right. Yeah, you can go. Oh, it felt good. I've been on it before, but it was fun. I could have done it all day. How does a blind person zip line? That's a good question. Um, you know, it's, you get strapped in, you wear your harness, you close your eyes and you just go down the zip line. You know, it's, if I were to do it, I usually, and if I was on a roller coaster, I would usually close my eyes too, right? So it doesn't, I don't think it really matters being deaf or blind and going on a zip line. It's just, I feel like it's like the feeling of just going down um, a line with wind in your hair and going really fast. The zip line is very popular with the campers as they snap the safety harness in place and race down the line, enjoying the feeling of floating through the air without a care in the world. A deaf blind person um, doing archery probably would lead to the arrows going astray. <laughs> Uh, however, we would make it safe, you know, we'd make sure that no one is standing um, in front of the deafblind person, everyone would be behind. And what we would do is um, on their back, show them, you know, line them up to where the target is and then show them um, by pulling the arrow which way to go and then they would just take it away from there. I think it's still the joy of being able to, hey, I did archery and I, you know, I missed a target but it was still fun. Some people found the archery range challenging, but they helped each other out with pointers and tips, leaving people like MJ feeling great about their personal triumph. It was fun because I was trying to hit the, the balloon in the middle, right? So, you know, I drew back the bow or the arrow and I actually ended up hitting the wall many times. It was funny. It was a good time. I've already had campers on the very first day said they're already excited for next year, so it's wow. It really means that it's going beautifully for everyone. Hello, I'm Alio, and here we are at the uh, first ever Canadian Deaf Blind Camp, and we're sitting here in my cabin. So, so far, since Sunday when I arrived, I've been meeting a lot of people, having a lot of conversations, introducing myself to new faces, you know, without something like this where people can come and socialize, there's a lot of isolation for people who are deafblind, kind of the same routine. So it's kind of a nice break from, from that isolation routine at home. So that's why it's important. Just to get out of the norm, you know, to get out of the box, come out and meet people that maybe they wouldn't be able to meet normally and to do uh, things that they normally wouldn't do on a daily basis at home. Dream big means for me that we can come together as a group and share our experience with each other and even though we're deaf blind helping each other as a group as a family no matter how big and impossible something can be we can achieve it and we're going to be there to help each other so all i can say is why not dream big there's nothing standing that way this this camp took months and months of planning and it involved a lot of work, it was stressful. And at the end of the day, when everyone came on Sunday night, I was just like, yep, yeah, this was worth it. You know, when I saw everyone smiling, when I saw everyone socializing and hugging each other and, you know, meeting friends they haven't met, met in years, you know, that it's just, it was, it was just all worth it. And I'm like, I would do this again in a heartbeat. Uh, today's the last day of the camp. Everybody will be flying home tomorrow, and tonight we're having a closing ceremony with a bonfire, and everyone's had an amazing, amazing week. The most important thing to us this week was that deafblind Canadians come together and enjoy themselves, and by far our greatest expectations have been met and beyond, and um, 
yeah, we're really looking forward to next year. Right now we're just trying to finish off this camp and we'll probably start planning next year's camp after the summer. It will be sad to say goodbye to the people I've met here. It will be. I'm not looking forward to it at all. It, uh, it went fast. Um, I learned a lot from new people and um, yeah, it definitely will be sad to say goodbye to them. But at the same time, I hope and I look forward to again being with them next year. Produced by Totem Studios, director Stephen J. Payne, camera operator Scott Mackay, Stephen J. Payne, editor Scott Mackay, Miriam Bakhtiar, integrated described video specialist Emily Harding, narrator Jim Van Horn, production supervisor Janice Sevatilli, director production Karen I, director programming Brian Perdue, vice president programming and production John Melville, president and CEO David Arrington, copyright 2018 Accessible Media Inc.